listening to the Meme Geek, episode 167. So, here's the thing, though. We got Johnny Sacco on the TV. Yes, we do. Now, it's my understanding that you've never encountered Johnny Sacco so far. This, uh, sadly, is my first ever viewing of Johnny Sacco and his flying robot. Wow, you sound completely let down and irritated that we're watching. Oh, I'm not let down. This lived up to (laughs) everything I expected it to be. (laughs) I'm now on episode three, and the giant Goliath vine, or gargoyle gargoyle vine, that (laughs) Japanese Destro created (laughs) through brain surgery. Like, what the fuck, dude? And you watch this on a regular basis? When I was six. You own it. Yeah, I own a bootleg of it. That, there's no production copy of this. I think it has been released. Didn't I point that out to you? You're like, holy crap. Did you? I think so. Yeah, well, you see how much I remembered that. Yeah, fair enough. So, you know. Now, did you really barter for this piece of crap? I did. You, I, you thought I was going to pay for it? I, you know, you own it. <laughs> yeah, but that doesn't mean I wanted to give money away for this shit. I, well, that I agree. Well, what I found you... a pot. What happened was there was a regional, sh- not really, you know, one of those little shows. One of those ones that are actually just nothing but dealers hawking comics. You know, right. a couple of toy guys, maybe. Sure. Um, I had bought a bunch of stuff. Stuff I didn't really want. You know, this stuff, just fill out the dollar box. You know, fill out the 20 you want to spend. You know, that kind of shit. Billy stuff. Yeah. And, you know, there was a couple of random interesting things that, you know, I didn't feel disappointed not having had previously. Right. But uh, I saw this guy with eight trillion bootlegs on his table. I'm like, look, how does somebody not come in here and fuck you with all these illegal copies of shit? (laughs) How does that happen, man? How do they not know you're here? So I saw this, and I was like, that's what we had before Star Wars, baby. <laughs> this is this is it, man. <laughs> Those spoiled ass kids these days don't know shit about pre Star Wars horse shit. <laughs> Nor should they. <laughs> they shouldn't have to suffer through this. Oh, I'm making sure that all my oh. nephews know exactly what this is. Oh dear God. So anyway, so uh you see Johnny Sacco on this table. And he wanted seven whole dollars for it. And I hemmed and hawed, and I looked at him like, I'm going to walk away. And he's like, what you got in the pile, man? And I was like, oh, I got this and this and this and this. He says, well, I'll take that and that and that. Because he's just going to burn more copies anyway. Right. He's, it's not going to cost. DVDs are 45 cents a piece. He's not losing out if he enjoys those comics. <laughs> <laughs> that is the strangest fucking story ever. And you have no recollection what he took. No. Because it had no meaning to you. What I took. owned it for 45 seconds. <laughs> I hadn't even read it yet. There was some Batmans. There was, I think there was might have been a banged up Challengers of the Unknown in there that had a cool cover, maybe. <laughs> that's, a, that's just a contradiction. <laughs> this is horrible! <laughs> this is horrible. And that's what makes it... Horrible. Horrible. Yeah, there it is. uh, Yeah, I wasn't going to say... Huzzah! I wasn't going to say great, believe me. I wanted to, and I'm like, no, that's not possible. I'm... The robot has camel toe. Oh, look at him, he does. Jesus. Do you have to point... Why were you looking there? (laughs) Uh, You can blame the camera angle for that one, my friend. (laughs) I am not dying to see robot (laughs) junk now or ever. (laughs) Ugh. As you can tell, kids, we're wasting time because it's DC Week. Wow. (laughs) Do people really look forward to DC Week or do they dread it? Like, two people have said that they've looked forward to DC Week. (laughs) I don't understand that. Oh, did you get those boxes of shite out yet? Got a couple of them out. We retweeted the uh, goods when people told us they had gotten it. Very nice. I haven't figured out custom forms yet, so the one going to Canada hasn't left. God damn, you foreign <laughs> bastards! How do you keep sneaking into this contest? Yeah, but it's only Canada, so I'm not... <laughs> so it's barely foreign. Ba- a, it, a, it's barely foreign. <laughs> B, the postage to something on the same continent isn't nearly as bad as literally overseas. <laughs> so who won these, anyway? Uh, a couple people. No recollection whatsoever? No. Not fair. <laughs> Ah! Huzzah! Bing! 
ding? Because that's the only time they mentioned anything. You know, Mandy won one. That's the Canadian girl. She won one. Good on you, Mandy. Well done. <laughs> Huzzah for Mandy. Hopefully we can give away a few more again at uh, Emerald City. Is this our official, um, when was our fifth anniversary? That was back on the 5th. The 5th? That was uh, oh, I totally 20 celebrated days it. ago. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I had a great time. I celebrated deeply. and You know, you were such a liar. Yeah, <laughs> totally. <laughs> you didn't even... So you had to be reminded. I'm sorry, that you know, the, the fifth anniversary of getting drunk and talking about comics into a computer to <laughs> slip my memory. <laughs> Do not cry. I swear to fucking God. How could you? <laughs> you snuffling bastard. This is important to me. That, sadly, is true. Fucking asshole. That's also you true. You don't get any tonight. Well, and I And if mean, you don't think that I got a plan to make sure you don't get any all right, tonight. Oh, Okay. All right. I see where you're going now. All right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Watch out, motherfucker. Crap. <laughs> well, shit. <laughs> Because Christ knows when Commodore White comes home, you know, finding out that I've been drinking and hanging out with you is such a massive turn-on that, you know, virtually guaranteed as soon as you walk out the door. Well, I can pile shit on. <laughs> Hell to the no. Did you hear what Bill said about this chick on the show? Shut the <laughs> fuck up! All I'm saying is you got... They will never find you. <laughs> All I'm saying is I got power you didn't realize. Oh, Christ. <laughs> so I and Andrew, our yep. official marketing research analyst and, and Tumblr official photographer and Tumblr manager. Really, kids, if it's not an article or an episode... We didn't do it. Andrew did it. <laughs> Blame that motherfucker. He's very talented. He's good. He he's, does a little too much sometimes because he's got like 57 people coming by the table at Emerald City in four days. Just wander off, dude. It worked last time. Oh, uh, I thought we'd talk to you guys. Oh, where, where's the tech Jedi? Oh, uh, he's not here. <laughs> where's the rep? Uh, he wandered off. He didn't just take off. <laughs> Did that happen? Yeah. Oh, shit. <laughs> I mean, think of how many times we went to go see somebody and they weren't there. Well, yeah, that's true, too. You know? <laughs> I'm hoping to catch some fucking buddy. And next year, I'm definitely joining a podcasting panel. Absolutely. Why not? Right. Five, six, at that point, it will be six years. You know, I get a little respect out of six years of effort. You know, something. Hell to the yeah. What, what? Even if people haven't listened, they'll be like, wow, six years. They must have some... Stand. And then they'll listen and they'll say, yeah, what the fuck did you I You spent my... six years getting to this point? <laughs> my eight-year-old daughter can swear and have a beer. <laughs> well, you're a fucked up father, sir, so I don't care about your opinion. <laughs> All too true. Right, so it's been uh, eight minutes now, so I guess we can start talking comics. Oh, <laughs> must we? Yeah, we kind of got it. It's DC week, kids, so buckle the fuck up. Hold on to your butts and prepare to be offended. There are new comics in DC Week. Just a couple. Um, a although rarity. I'm already giving up on them. <laughs> Remember, this is our bi-monthly DC because there's so few of them. We're going to go two issues of just about everything all at once. Except for those double shippers where we get three. Yeah, those Thanks for that, bastards. DC. We appreciate that, you schmucky fucks. So, Why is this robot a sphinx, by the way? I mean, well, I mean, it's just a design decision. You know, the, the, apparently, the, they, they didn't explain it, but you got to figure, you know, even Japanese guys know who Egypt is. I mean, even Japanese guys <laughs> know who Egypt is. You know, if I had any energy, I would punch you in the face. <laughs> You'd have to get up. Yep, so you're completely and utterly safe. And, and not even neck. I'm moving up the face for that one. That's how bad that was. I mean, I know. Even, you're not even going to throw the bottle because nope. it's not empty. Fuck no. No. <laughs> You'd have to insult the Irish for about an hour and a half for me to waste beer. And then I would be insulting the Irish. So, you know, you're safe again. At that point, it's all the same, really. Blasphemy! Fucking eye ties and mix, the fucking bastards. Never the twain shall meet, you fucks. Yeah, Commodore wife got to spend her very first St. Patty's Day as an Irish person. Oops. Since she was married to me. So, you know, she got, like, 
granted status for the day. <laughs> for the day. I mean, fuck it. Like, everybody does. Like, we sell pins. We are the only people that are like, no, <laughs> today is our day, but you can have it. <laughs> if you Italians have a holiday, you keep that shit to yourself. Like, nobody knows about that. Yeah, we don't want you in on it. It's actually fun. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because no one's ever enjoyed St. Patty's Day. That's valid. <laughs> you muppet. So, Harley Quinn... Ah, yeah! <laughs> Two and three. Now, if we remember from one, Harley has inherited from one of her patients this bizarro building with an apartment and, was it like a wax music? A fun house. She and it's... It's just... <laughs> on it's... the plus side, uh, Amanda Connor covers are awesome. Yes. On the plus side, the art is actually really good. Yeah, I enjoy the art. Uh, That's yeah, a I very will solid artist. Say that I'm not going to lie. On the downside, Harley Quinn is a really hard character to get correct. Yeah, like the laughter and the menace is really challenging. And then to make her the lead character, you can't make her that menacing. So you no, have you really this can't because then you're I well, not necessarily idolizing, but you're you know engaging as a protagonist a nut hatch that smashes people with giant hammers. Basically, so, what this comes down to is you've got a character that people like, so like, let's make her a hero. It didn't work for Sabretooth. There's one villain who has enough morality to be occasionally heroic, and that's Batroc the Leaper. <laughs> who I found out today in a still was definitely in Winter Soldier. Yep, played by George St. Pierre, the uh, MMA fighter. Oh. Uh, okay. I have no idea. Is that um, good? Yeah, he's like undefeated for the past six years. But does he have the right accent? Yeah, he's French Canadian. He's French Canadian, so he says a boot. So yeah, he's about as realistically French as Batroc the Leaper is. <laughs> That's all I was asking yeah, for. Yes, <laughs> yes, he is as realistically French as a Kirby creation could possibly hope to be, or a Marvel if you prefer. You know the. Uh, Striped shirts and the beret called Frenchie that would help out Sergeant Fury. That's a real thing, kids, by the way. It really is, yeah. Yep. People were so generic at points that, you know, that's why all the Westerns had the cook named Cookie. Yep, yep. Uh, yeah, but yeah, there was a uh, French sympathizer with a beret, a handlebar mustache, and a striped shirt called Frenchie who would show up occasionally to help out the Howling Commandos. Well, I mean, all those guys from fucking Harlem and Brooklyn and Bronx, they can't, uh, they can't pronounce French. So his name was like Rambo, and they're like Rambo. <laughs> so it is fuck it. He's Frenchy. <laughs> it's interesting though. You look at the Howling Commandos, and you have one of the really first positive black role models. With Gabe, yeah, yeah, uh, like a not stereotypical. Yes, a uh, fine. He's a Harlem jazz musician. Let's not overly push the not stereotypical part because <laughs> it does not hold up under big scrutiny. Fine, but. You know, written as a equal member of the team, not a caricature in any way. Didn't speak in Mambi Pambi. Hello, <laughs> Sarge. We've got to get out of here. No, they didn't do that shit. It's not like the fucking uh, Black Hawk horrifying. <laughs> the Black Hawk is really bad. Yeah. So, or Green Lantern with his little sidekick pie face for fuck's sake. <laughs> That's right. Yes. So you have all this, and then it's like, but when you get to Europe, like, no, fuck it. Uh, German people suck, and Frenchie is Frenchie. <laughs> really? <laughs> really? That's how generic comics can get, kids. But, um, yeah. How did we diverge into that? Um, anything to avoid talking about. But uh, Harley, Harley Quinn, Quinn is an incredibly difficult character. And <laughs> it was Batroc the Leaper. That's how we got it. Ah, that. yes. Because once I bring Batroc the Leaper up, it's all over. <laughs> <laughs> so she's got this inheritance that she's got. She's trying to take care of it. She's trying to make dough. But somehow, and I don't remember where this came in, there's there's this, this imaginary zombie beaver helping her crusade to... Well, she's save, wacky. ...save pound. She's not, that's not wacky. That's... <laughs> well, she's insane. That's not even a real she's word She's supposed for that. to be she's a crazy person. <laughs> I mean, where are her, um, 
Hyenas. I guess they did those in the last series, so they're not doing yeah, them again. You can't, you can't have hyenas in the middle of downtown Staten Island or wherever. Oh, yes, but you can, like, a, a decomposing beaver is totally fucking Well, it's simple. a stuffed decomposing she beaver. She has a dead so. guy sitting around the house, okay? And I know this because in the second issue, Poison Ivy picks him up and plays zombie with him. Yes, she does, and that was a they, little bit creepy. But the whole point is they're on this crusade with the imaginary zombie beaver right. to save all these pound animals. And to find a fridge for all the hitman bodies that she has to deal with, including because the ones she's got she a bounty feeds on to her. the dogs. <laughs> well, I mean, it seems not brilliant, but you know, prudent to you know feed the dogs. I'm sorry, I'm just not connecting with this. Like, I don't know if it's me or the book, but I don't care. Like. You've got Hottie McMidget and his little um, <laughs> Nort-looking friend, uh, like, and then he's the uh, Hottie's in love with the fat woman. Like, it's like they're in a circus in an apartment building. Like, I don't get yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, that's exa- that's a good way to put it. A circus in an apartment building, and the the laughs just keep on coming as she kills more and more hitmen on like the Tunnel of Love ride. Yep. And then, of course, you've got, yeah, then uh, Poison Ivy gives her a potion so that as she feels unloved, she just sprinkles sex berries or whatever the fuck Poison <laughs> Ivy grew. And everybody around her just starts fucking going lunatic. Which, uh, of course, results in a prison bus crashing and a bunch oh, of insane sure. prisoners murdering people to impress her. Now, I was largely, I, I did get some amusement out of this issue. It's not nearly as much as I would have hoped for. And it, it became terribly obvious right off the bat that it was the berries doing it. There was no trying to hide that. There, there, it's there was not no a subtle there. look. And I'm not, and I'm not requiring it to be subtle. Let's make that clear. But you cannot be subtle and have the word "sex berries." Like that's <laughs> not fucking possible. I don't think they actually said "sex berries." I think that's a Billyism right there. <laughs> look, if you can have boo berries, I'm just carrying it to the next possible. Can you have boob berries? Boo, not boo bear. What? For God's sake, man! <laughs> Breakfast cereal, it's the not next filth. Step, don't you think? <laughs> From boobs to sex, you're going to get us all killed. <laughs> By I whom? D- Careful. No, nothing you say to you, sir. <laughs> First Johnny Stocko, now this, as we alienate literally everyone. No, not everyone. No, I was referring to the ghost-based. We don't Cereal. actually have female listeners. Or listeners. Well, we got two. That One was... now. Fine. <clears throat> Having established that, um, yeah, you, you said it all. That's that's what happened in this issue. They were boo berries and sex berries. <laughs> Are you continuing with this? No, no, nope. it's over. It's over. If I find a, a really cheap trade, like under five buck trade... You or, probably still won't get it. Or... Or... If there's a buy one, get one, and there's nothing else remotely interesting, I would give it another go. I mean, it's... I don't know. I mean... It's wh- distraction bathroom reading. When the Dodsons did, uh, you didn't enjoy that either. Not really. The gags just didn't... It, much like this. <laughs> I thought that one was funnier than this one, but I, I do like it. It was, but it still wasn't funny on an absolute level for me. Do you, can, do you actually like Harley Quinn? I've never, like, uh, as a Batman aficionado, <laughs> which is the polite way of saying or calling you a Batman super freak, um, <laughs> you've never shown a lot of interest in the character, to my recollection. No. I mean, I liked her well enough in small doses on the animated show. Right. Sure. But um, uh, anybody who can fall in love with Joker is not somebody who's going to appeal to me. Because <laughs> I've never really followed that whole Joker inspires people to anything routine. You know, it creeps me out that there's anyone on the fictional planet, let's say that, make sure that everyone understands that I realize that this is still a fictional world we're talking about. It creeps me the fuck out that there's anyone in any fictional world that could be inspired by the fucking Joker in any way. It worries me greatly. I'm totally inspired by the Joker. No, you're not. No, I'm not. <laughs> so, no, I'm, I'm not particularly appealed to by people okay. who would... Especially those who would bang him, for fuck's sake. So, that's that. Dude, people like albinos. Like, that's a very sexy thing right now. 
No, I'm totally lying. If you're goth, sure. You well, that's fucking... very possible. Well, who do you think is following the Joker, really? Like, well, yeah, you gotta be, you got to have a level of... Uh... The goth Joker connection. <laughs> is that a title? I don't know. I mean, sex berries may take it. Who the fuck knows? <laughs> Boob berries. No. <laughs> Boob berries is not taken. I'm throwing things Fine, you that'll be the subtitle. I hate you. <laughs> And the worst part is I had nothing to do with that, and I'll still get blamed somehow. By whom? Uh, who who would ever blame you for something like that? Who would ever blame you for something I did? Everyone! <laughs> Everyone <laughs> ever! You gotta talk to him. Why? I don't even talk to you, and you're talking to me! <laughs> Wait, have people told you to talk to me? <laughs> really? <laughs> About what? Should I stop recording? No. <laughs> He's staring at people again. Okay, well, fine. So Batman Superman <laughs> seven, 7 and 8. I hate, hate this storyline. I mean, hate it. Mongol creates a video game to get people used to power for no good reason so that he can somehow absorb the... Like, hi kids, this is Dr. T. Omar. <laughs> Nothing about a video game gives anyone anything. <laughs> this shit is dumb. Thank you. This has been Dr. T. Omar with your science moment. <laughs> How terrible can it be, man? Uh, yeah, so... In seven in particular, um, let me see if I can get this right. An out of work single mom looking for a loan to get custody, although I don't know how that works. Uh, so she can keep her apartment so she doesn't lose custody. Yeah, but that's got to be, I mean, that's got to be something the court would have taken into consideration. You have, you put yourself in debt. <clears throat> so you wouldn't be homeless. So how Well, do... you have to assume because she's the heroine. That the father, in true comic book fashion, is a yeah. dick weasel. So the only way he could get custody is if she loses housing. If she gets becomes homeless, he can sue for custody much easier. Well, you are sure. a drug taking, horror banging douchebag, but you have a house, so you know you just moved up in that estimation. Yeah, but if she's that close, I mean, the court's going to examine those kind of financials. If they re realize that. She's got so little dough to keep the home that she now put herself deeper in debt. Why are you looking at me like that for? You have a little more depth to this than I think they're really looking for. Yeah. But <laughs> so having been close to homeless and having a sister that's fighting for custody, I got a couple of ideas about how this shit works. Fair enough. <laughs> I, the average comic book fan drop, <laughs> buying a $4 goddamn Superman-Batman crossover is probably not too concerned on this score. As you yourself have discovered, homeless people don't buy a ton of fucking comic books. Well, the point of her, her getting into this whole... Mommy! Yes. The point of this, her, her getting into this whole situation is during a fight, Soups destroyed the building she was going to get the loan in. Be fair, Soups. And Batman. Yes. But she really focused on Supes. <laughs> well, you know, he's the powerful one. Like, if Superman hits a building and Batman hits a building... <laughs> yeah. Nah, you know. Ah, I can, I'm following you. I'm with you. I don't know what you're talking about. Now, that was the strangeness that was seven. <laughs> like, I'm sorry. Like, the whole video game... Like, first off, Mongol... Yeah, Mongol's not bright enough to fucking... Even if he is, he wouldn't game. do it. It's like, oh, hey, we have this plan where you can use freaking um, Luna Moths to take over the world. <laughs> I'm He's... Mongol. We're not fucking doing that. <laughs> yeah. Take your moth plan and go. <laughs> well, how about this video game attack one? What? I'm going to punch you in the skull. <laughs> I mean, and I was just rereading some of the previous series of Superman, Batman, uh, Public Enemies. Yep. Where... Uh, the meteor was coming, and Luthor took advantage of it. Said it's coming specifically to get Superman, so it's going to destroy us all as collateral. And they all get controlled. All the villains get controlled to fight Batman and Superman yep. for the bounty. And it says, "Wait a minute, Mongol's not talking. He loves to talk." 
That's not his, his subtlety is not his silent, you know, co- contemplative fighting is not his style. No, this was like a <laughs> toy man plan. This is like the worst Mongol plan ever. Oh yeah, absolutely. And, you know, like as much as I hate Jimmy Olsen, professional gamer or whatever the fuck was going on here, and then. Superman dies so that he can come back as a character in the game. You have unlocked a hidden character by losing? What? No. Uh, That's not how video games work. And it's leading to the son of Mongol at the... Uh, the ah! <laughs> oh! My brain is throbbing. And not in some sort of good, like, in an aneurysm fucking tumor way. Ah! <laughs> ah! Not in some awesome, like, oh, hey, we have ice cream, by the way, way. No, no, but... <laughs> Well, at least they finally ended that one, called it even. You know, we could get though we could stop reading that. It, it it's no longer going to affect us with that particular storyline. However, now something is going on with fucking Power Girl's powers, and Helena enlists bats from the second dimension to investigate. Here's my take on this. Um, I don't read World's Finest. I think that Batman's daughter being Huntress and Superman's sister being Power Girl is vaguely annoying. <laughs> I but that's from ages back, too. You can't really call that an Earth 2 problem. Irregardless, like, I don't read World's Finest. Hey, I don't care about them. You know them. better than that. Regardless. <laughs> <sighs> I don't care about World's Finest at all. It's not a book I read. I'm not tempted by it. Huntress has never been an interesting character to me, ever. And Power Girl was only funny when she had diet soda and cat issues. Um, <laughs> beyond that, however, I really liked this. I thought that for the first time in Superman Batman, I felt like there was a good take, like Batman not wanting to trust Superman, and Superman knowing that he's doing something that Batman isn't going to like, but doing it anyway. <laughs> and the judge, like, I thought they had that good handle on the characters. And then the Huntress... Batman connection, like Batman checking her out to find out that, uh, knocking her out to find out that she is his daughter or alternate daughter, and then her being like, okay, now that we're done with that, I'm going to take these cuffs off because we're done with that. The play between all four characters was extremely well done. Hmm. So it was a huge step forward in a book that I don't really like. On top of which, you have, for the first time since the New 52, Superman feels like Superman. It's like, don't go near her. She might set you off and you'll blow up. Yeah, I'm still doing that. Back <laughs> tisk. Like, tisk. There, there was a whole paragraph about the word tisk, uh, which was awesome. <laughs> uh, but yeah, like you have a Superman who's sacrificed. He's like, look, this is the right thing to do. It's not. I'm not just going to sit back and be a dick and bang Wonder Woman. Like, I'm a superhero. Right, she yeah, needs help. Good. So good I point. thought they r- really <clears throat> nailed what I know about the characters to be true in this issue for the first time. I mean, the art has been strong on all of them. I didn't like the last storyline art as much, but I hated the story so much more that the art was fine. (laughs) It's like, really, you know, you're not my favorite, but you're so fucking bad that you get a cookie. (laughs) Like, you earn the cookie by default. Enjoy your fucking victory cookie of defaultness. That's insanity. (laughs) Giant victory cookie of default. Get the fuck out of here with this, man. (laughs) <laughs> so in Dark Knight, <laughs> because we got a lot of fucking books. Yeah, it's man. true. They, yeah, that, yeah. that was that was the fundamentals of everything that happened. Well, what do you have to say? I don't have anything to say because I barely remembered anything you said. Oh, good. Well, I mean, that just tells you how much it affected me. <laughs> I mean, you are a much deeper reader than I am. There's also, no I moral... reread it this morning on the way, making uh, sure. Yeah, that'll do it. <laughs> Like, yeah, it's been Whereas a I read it a month and a yeah. fucking half ago. It's been three weeks. Maybe I should revisit these a little bit. <laughs> uh, so in 26 and 27, I'm going to do these as a whole across the plot. Because the plot is two sentences. And the sentences Human are, trafficking are, is bad. Human trafficking is bad. Barely covered up illegal slave trade in garment factories are bad. And Penguin did it all. <laughs> That does carry the whole thing. Do you remember 25 years ago? Be careful. I may or may not. (laughs) Do you remember the silent G.I. Joe Snake Eyes issue? Oh, yeah. How cool was that Except that was 34 issues ago. 34 years ago. Is it it that long? It was like 82, right? 83. Oh, yeah. I guess you're right. But either way, think about that for a second. 
Yeah. That issue was awesome. And every time you do a silent issue now, you just shit all over it. <laughs> it's been done. Uh, I remember when The Punisher did it, when Steve Dillon plotted his own story without dialogue. Ah, uh, yeah. Um, and it wasn't terrible or anything, but, you're like, you know, I feel like I should be watching Snake Eyes right now. Um, <laughs> I didn't mind it so much as they should have just left it completely silent all the way through. Oh, not the you coughing? Know? Well, no, yeah, they can have a cough. But at some point, somebody started speaking, and I'm like, stop. <laughs> I You're breaking what little mood there is. I felt like it was just unnecessary. Like, okay, they don't speak English, but Batman still cares. Subtle, I yeah, get it. Batman speaks Spanish. Batman speaks 72 fucking languages. But on top of that, like, you've got... Um, You've got the ridiculous the little girl praying to the angel, and then Batman shows up, and his wings look suspiciously <laughs> angelic, and they make a little clothespin Batman to put on top of the Christmas tree, and then he actually revisits to wave at the girl through the window. Now, to be fair, Bats would do something like that. It depends on what era. He would have done that in the 80s. He totally would have done that in the 70s. 70s, yes. 80s, you know... All right, you might pre push it a little bit. Yeah, all right. Post Robin, fuck no, he's not <laughs> waving at small children. I'm sorry, I could be grinding someone's teeth into the fucking cement right now. You're on your own, kid. Are you on fire? No, you're fucking welcome. <laughs> wow. Am I wrong? <laughs> no, no, you got it. You got it. You got it. Fine. Whatever the fuck. I don't know what I'm talking about. Hey, hey, yeah, hey, you know who knows Batman better here? Like really, um, <laughs> but. I just felt like this was... I did really like <clears throat> the Penguin. And, like, the Penguin being a bad guy was cool. And the moment where um, one of his sidekicks, henchmen, t- gives him bad news and he just stabs him full in the chest with an umbrella. Yeah. But the key moment... There were two key Penguin moments in these. And these were the only high points of this book for me. Um, one was when you see the Penguin surrounded by bad guys, and then he's on the ground grasping for an umbrella, and they're all lying around him. Because that's the ultimate Penguin moment. Like, he knows he's not going to do shit. It's like, you know, ooh, my uh, flamethrowing umbrella? Limited at best against Batman. My real plan is to have guys that might beat the shit out of him. And they never do. So I really enjoyed that. And then the moment where he's in prison and he walks into a room filled with 32 lawyers and you know that he's going to be out in exactly eight seconds. <laughs> like, exactly. That's the penguin. Not 8.2. Nope. Not 7.2. 8.2 and half of you lose your job and one of you loses your testicles. That's the way it works at the Penguin Law Firm. <laughs> the Penguin Law Firm. So that like that nailed the penguin for me. Like you know, him getting fucked up in a terrible plan, very penguin. Him making sure that he pays absolutely no penance for it whatsoever, equally penguin. Yep. So love that. Right on. But could have all been accomplished with dialogue. Could have. Yeah, absolutely. And for four bucks. Yeah, it, it could have used. It could have been one or the other, man. Just. Yep. Make it better silent, or give me something. Give me some wittiness, some witticisms, yeah. stuff like that. Wacky Batman antics. <laughs> Batmite to the rescue! So that was two of them. And because of twacked out shipping schedules, we now have a third Dark Knight to deal How with. How dare! And I think this ends at thirty, so I think we're okay from here out. So now they take a gear shift here where. Shitty Father 3,622 Oh, is my up. God. I, all I, I'm reading this issue. I'm like, oh, he's just going to talk about this. It's so bad. <laughs> we get two shitty cliches for the price of one in this issue. With Abraham Langstrom, who thinks secretaries are so dumb they need to be reminded the difference between coffee and water. He just says, ah, you're a shitty son. I'm going to make money. I'm going to make money. Come on now. Money is everything. Yeah. The bad businessman shitty father routine. Dude, when did Man Bat become second only to the Joker in Batman villains? Yeah, like, well, how, what? how often has this asshole got to crop up the last couple like, of years? It's Kirk goddamn Lang- <laughs> Like, you are, like, ooh, it's kind of clever that instead of Batman, it's Man Bat. Whoa! Right. See what you did there? I get it, yeah. But you know what? Captain America doesn't punch America blah, blah, blah. Captain all the goddamn time. <laughs> Man Spider does not make a ton of appearances. <laughs> 
Jameson Jonah J doesn't have a rival newspaper down the goddamn road. No, it's it's. I Although that would be awesome. That might be, maybe, or maybe he if he was fucking with like the mayor of Miami or something. <laughs> Miami's like we don't got nobody tearing down every other building on every other block. <clears throat> Brush L. Lionel head. Lamprey versus J. Jonah Jameson. <laughs> Battle of the brushy mustache. <laughs> oh, shit. And we got the uh, startlingly large, because I don't want to say anything else about that. Because it's fucking Man Bat, and I'm tired of seeing Man Bat. I just, you know, oh, uh, uh, it's not you, it's his father. <gasps> dun, dun, dun! So there's yet a third Man Bat. So there's Man Bat. That- there's man bat, woman bat, and papa bat. Yep. And apparently soon they will Kirk, be Kirk, Francine, and Abraham. Yep. Apparently soon they'll be, uh, you know, Tawny the Talking Tiger and Uncle Billy Shazam bat or whatever the I fuck. I don't you need know. any of those. The man bat family adventures will be coming out from DC. Wow, I'm really worried that might happen. <laughs> In this DC climate, I, you know. I ain't holding out any fucking... <laughs> so in Detective... <laughs> <laughs> what a subtle change. Detective so 27 Detective. is... The anniversary, thing, right? For God's sake. Uh, super special mega-sized anniversary issues featuring an all-star... Hello. Hello. All-star roster of creators. So we get a Neil Adams drug trip, which is pretty much all we get out of him anymore. Yeah, I was thinking this. I was like, oh, is this a dream sequence? It must be. Neil Adams is involved. (laughs) We get a Joker origin, and we get a retired Bats in the new Bat family. Now, aside from needing to drop acid to understand Neil Adams, I thought that the Joker story was pretty decent. It was readable. Which one was the Joker one? Oh, the pre-Joker one? Yes. It was ah. his pseudo-origin thing. And uh, the future Bat Family one was palatable, I'll say. <laughs> you know, I liked um, the fact that you had Batman 75 being like, this is dumb, this is dumb, but I, you know, it's so much fun. Like, everything hurts as I like, punch these guys in the face. Uh, but I did feel like the Bat Family, you know, Commissioner Barbara Gordon was horrible. Uh, Damien? Wait, what? Well, I mean, it's a future piece. It's not... Set in stone. Everything is alternate in this place. DC, you can do any goddamn thing you want anymore. And that's what caused all their problems 50 to 30 years ago to begin with. Ah. And now they're just doing it all over again. New universes. Norman Reedus is in this? Interesting. The Didn't anime Iron Man. Now, you're still not caught up with Walking Dead. I have the last one, the one that happened last night or the night before. Everything else I watched. Oh, okay, good. So you know about Lizzie and her twack the fuck out flower gazing. Oh, my goodness gracious. <laughs> <laughs> that was some crazy shit right there. Dude, I was, I'm watching it. I'm like, it feels like they might go there, but they can't go there. Like, they wouldn't know. That's like because I really like the kids. Like they made them really likable, and uh, you know, I'm not sensitive. Let's be. Let's call a spade a spade. I'm not. You know, a caring human being. Um, and I'm like, oh, these are cute kids. Like I'm sorry to see you. They'll turn into zombie chow. And then they went that fucked up with them. I'm like, oh, because obviously, it's a parallel to something that happens in the comics while being slightly different. And I'm like, you know, they wouldn't do that. Like, that's just too fucked up for television. Like, yeah, okay, fine. You can show a guy's ass now. I get that. And yay for that. Um, but you can't do that. Nobody oh, would do that. yes, they can. We're, did you tear up? And like, they uh, totally did. I gasped. And, and I, I don't mean that just mentally. I, I just know that, like, kids... My jaw kind of, dropped. And I was like... Because it's kind of a, you know sore spot for you when they put that kind of thing out there. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. But, uh, yeah, it, I totally did not see that happening. She was going to kill some fucking buddy in that episode. I did not really expect it to be her sister. I thought she might go zombie and then bite the sister. I yeah. didn't. 
Yeah. She, I yeah, might you know might go get herself bit and right. crawl away somewhere the sister would find her. Right. Something didn't see like that, that coming. I, you, you didn't have to. You assumed at least one of them was not making it to the final episode. Oh yeah. And I was like, she was gonna get Judith too, and I'm like, oh fucking hey man, they stumbled on your cracker crazy ass just in time. <laughs> And that's what we talk about instead of Batman 27. Well, you know, I got to say, though, like, <laughs> totally didn't see it coming. It's been um, a very strong season thus far. Oh, yeah. In very odd ways, too. Very character-driven, very quiet episodes that are totally fucked up. Yeah, a lot of people are hating that. And I'm like, watch something else, motherfucker. Read the book, man. It's far worse than this. <laughs> they don't like Zombies are the side, uh, the byproduct of the overall idea, yeah, not yeah. the end all be all. Well, that's, it's the other way around for these complainers. Well, those people are wrong. <laughs> I don't know how else to say it. Like, <laughs> shit, man. Like, you know, it, every movie you like, it's the people that drive it, not the fact that they're eaten. <laughs> if you eat interchangeable prisoners, you have Alien Three. Just bear that. <laughs> in mind. There you go. <laughs> And there's your title. That's a very good point. <clears throat> so, yeah, there was a lot of good things in Detective 27. I like that they brought back... I mean, you had Neil Adams, who's, like, the premier Batman guy He's at this point. He's way up there. Uh, at least alive and working. Yeah. Who who more so than Neil Adams. But then you have Mike Barr, who had a huge yeah. uh, underrated run in the 80s. Yep. I, I know you're not a huge fan of... Uh, was he the one who did Year 2? Is that... With the Reaper? Was that his fault? No, I think he did three, didn't he? I don't know, but uh, you know, but he had some really tight, well done Batman. So yeah, he had Graham yeah. Nolan yep. in there, who's a huge Batman artist. <clears throat> so yeah, they had to get in here on this anniversary issue at some point. So. But yeah, I like that they didn't just pick like all the current guys. They had less obvious yes choices. No. Um, that did please me, but. I just you know the and then you had the Gothica and this was kind of cool that they actually moved a full story into the end. It wasn't just tiny stories, but how many times has somebody fucked with Batman's brain? Yeah, it, it's that is something nobody seems to want to get away from. And, oh, here's an alternate future where you and Catbird, because all your sidekicks have to be bird based now. But uh, yeah, I totally forgot about that. And what? <laughs> Bluebird or Bluebell and the Gothamite? Yeah, like, go away. Do something else. Think of something else. Come on, fellas. Work with us here. So, I, you know, I thought they did certain things kind of well. Like, I like the fact that um, as Batman figures out, he gets more and more angry. And I like the fact that. Even the other villains were semi-confused about where they were. Yeah. There were some neat twists on a really, really <laughs> overdone concept. <laughs> but orderly Killer Croc was pretty goddamn amusing. Uh, Nurse Zaz <laughs> just seemed forced and ridiculous. A little bit. Uh, I did find it impressive they remembered the Merrymaker, even from the recent past. Like, oh, here's another psychiatrist villain. Yeah, come on with that. <laughs> so... Did we already screw over into 28? Well, that? I mean, that's the first... The first part of Gothica happens there. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Gothtopia. Stop with the events, for God's sake. Just have him punch a street thug for a couple issues. Solve... You know, at this point, I would be happy with literally an issue with no real useful connecting dialogue of just wandering around the streets punching out muggers. He might solve a mystery. Or Something rewrite good. history. Bat oh. tails, woohoo! Eh. Eh. I don't want that. I'm tired of that. You don't like Ducktales? Never watched it. I hate you so much. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Uh, I was watching Damian? Robotech when Ducktales was out. Okay, I was watching real emotional stories of people dying and saving the universe. Yes. And you were watching a duck. That, that duck is uh, better remembered than Robotech ever will be. Is he? Shit, yeah. Hard to tell. No, it's not. No, Robotech is still big. You don't like to think it because you never really were a fan. 
No, uh, you can call me an anti-fan or not a fan. <laughs> Whatever the fuck that meant. <laughs> means I don't fucking like Robotech. Yeah. First off, everyone has two eyes, okay? If you're a pilot, you should not have a giant fucking haircut covering one of your eyes. That's ridiculous, stupid. <laughs> Also, and you're... And if you're a male, you should have pants. Go tell that shit to Donald. Dude, he's a duck. He's a giant, life human-sized duck without pants. He's also a sailor on leave. He should not have pants. <laughs> Point! Uh, Reverend! All right, you got that one. So, <clears throat> where was I with Detective? Um, I, well, uh... Yeah, we had moved into yeah, uh, the, the, the crossover Gothtopia. between 27 and 28. Um, so, oh, look, it's the Scarecrow again who just can't be satisfied without fucking over the entire city with his fear gas. Uh, it, didn't Batman used to have, like, 40 or 50 villains, not sex? Yes. Like, Man Bat, Scarecrow, Joker... And then even even his councils, all guys who you know, Professor Pig, and I can't believe I had to say that out loud. And the Merrymaker, <laughs> they're trying. They they have in the last two years. They have no. There was a really nice Clayface story. They have yeah. definitely ventured away from what felt like three. Yeah, it's not as bad as uh, as much as I loved it. Bendis's Avengers, where it was either the Hood or uh, Norman Osborn for six years. That was getting tiresome. Just the same. <laughs> it really was. <laughs> Ultron shows up, and Norman Osborn defeats him and becomes more villainous. Wait, what? Oh, hold on. Yeah, great, whatever. So, yeah, we don't know how this one's going to turn out, but I'll bet that saves the day. I'm betting so. so. Well, you know, I mean, considering he's teamed up with um, Batwing and Birds of Prey, and yeah, he's, he's got some it. other book that I'm never touching in a bajillion years. Like I think Batman's probably the one to figure some shit out. Batman family's gotten too huge; it really has. Well, I mean, you know, outside of El Guapo and the bat eating cow or whatever, it's not a family. Cow bat. Oh, yeah. yeah, I'm talking about the family. Oh yeah, El Guapo and. <sighs> Cowbat are both valid fucking members of Batman family. Yeah, so we got like 16 stories between Batman Black and White 5 and 6. <laughs> uh, you know what? I don't even care. Come on, man. I thought 6 was stronger than 5. Um, I like the Adam Hughes story where Catwoman played both Slam Bradley and Batman. Yeah. Uh, plus Adam Hughes in Black and White was awesome. So I enjoyed that. Uh, I just the back and whites. Like if it's a good story, I want it to be longer. And if it's a bad story, I don't want it. So either way, I'm just. <laughs> when it was a miniseries, it was kind of neat. And but now they're just. I feel like they're pushing a gimmick more than legitimate storytelling. Oh, well, no, this sometimes. is over now. Oh, is that the last one? Yeah. Oh, okay. I thought it was an ongoing because the last two were all four issue series. So yeah. six threw me. Making more dough, man. Uh, fair enough. So there was a lot of it. So, yeah, there's... Batman tests the cave's defenses. Oh, yeah. Once a year, <clears throat> presumably on his birthday, Alfred tries to kill Batman. I'm supposed to believe this. No. Um, a small-timer yaps to his pals about his encounters with the bat. I did kind of enjoy... First off, Keith Giffen wrote that, which I think is hysterical. And I'm also shocked that he hasn't done way more Batman since he's done <laughs> everything. Uh, I like the fact that they're like you know talking about escaping him and Batman is the bartender the entire time. Yeah. I did enjoy that. That amused me. <laughs> so that was a good one. Um, there was a good little piece about uh, a murder of a co- in a comic about a comic artist or some shit. Oh, the lady who is a ma- uh, kills the guard to draw her story. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I um, like the Western art. I didn't think. <clears throat> I felt they should either develop that or not done it. Like, it looked <laughs> it great, a, but it was not. It was not a good piece for an eight pager. You know. Yeah, because I mean, who was the villain? Like, what was the point of that? They really needed a full issue to flesh that out. Um, there was a decent two face story with the twist of he had a decoy. Yeah, but you know, it ends on the horrible Batman captures the coin and Two Face is asking what. Like uh, again, I've seen that That's four that, thousand oh, that times. That is a standard. Of all Two-Face stories now. Um, 
Then there's the one where Batman infiltrates the mission, so to speak, to save a small-time hood. Which seems very, you know... No, that was... I mean, you know, he goes in to find out. He finds out that the criminal is not a complete dick, so he helps him. Yeah. That's that's the new Batman. That's within character. It's not, you know, the Batman of the last 20 years. But it is the new 52 Batman. Yeah. Which is not... That aspect of him, I don't have any kind of problem with. Well, you didn't always (laughs) enjoy the uh, hates everything Batman. No, 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 no. Of course not. Who would? I mean... (laughs) Think about that. I, you know, it turns out I didn't even write anything down about six. You know what? I was in six. Uh, the Adam Hughes one I really liked, but there was a story in six where two women that have dated Bruce Wayne get together to tell tales about him. One has to pretend that he's on a date after he disappears at the opera after renting it out, so she sits there alone. And the other one has sex with him, but feels like he's not really committing to anything, and she's worried that he might hurt somebody. And I'm like, wow, Batman literally uses lack of emotional relationships. And sexual repression to take out on criminals. That's the best thing I've ever heard. Wow. It totally makes sense. <clears throat> I, I don't know who wrote that one, but I'm like, you just nailed an aspect <laughs> of Batman that I've never even contemplated. <laughs> She's a nice girl. I'd like to see her again, and I never will. Fuck you, little purse stealing bitch. <laughs> I'm like, oh yeah. <laughs> wow. She it was seems lit- to fit. She's a professional dancing gymnast, supermodel, playboy, playmate. And I had to leave to catch your dumb terrorist ass! <laughs> okay! Totally works. I suddenly... Uh, it makes him even more twisted when we suspected. But <laughs> Totally makes sense. Like, I was like, wow, you really thought about this. He's like, how can I use my cover to be an even worse human being? What? Wait, no. Um, to fight more effectively crime, bad people, things. Yes, that's it. That's it. I'll get blue balls. That'll take care of it all. It totally makes what? sense, so. <laughs> Dude, do you think it's easy? Like, if you're, like, well satiated and happy in your life to kick a guy through a wall, do you think you don't think once or twice, well, this is not the right way to go about things? That sounds like a jock to me. But Ooh. Batman is not a jo- First off, <laughs> no. <laughs> You're inclusive now, remember? <laughs> Everyone has opinions, even jocks. No, jocks totally. They are still... You are so wrong. <laughs> but, uh... They are still the assholes. Is Batman a straight up. jock? No. Well, there you go, then. So that doesn't... that Your already horrible theory doesn't hold water. Um, but, yeah, like, it totally... It's so fucked up and wrong, but it's like, yeah, how do I build rage? Well, my parents died, but that happened about two bajillion years ago. I'm a billionaire, and I date nothing but supermodels. Um... Yeah, you know, maybe it's hard to keep the anger up, but I could sleep with you, but instead I have to go out in the rainy cold in the worst smelling city in America <laughs> and fight a guy who carves people's faces off and staples them to his own forehead. I have some anger. It just it cleans up so much about the Batman mythos. Why are you so angry all you know, when well, George Clooney is like Batman shouldn't be so angry? He's got all these awesome... It's like, Clooney, no, he doesn't ever get laid. Imagine the George Clooney who never got to actually put out. (laughs) Fuck you, Chris O'Donnell! (laughs) Wow! It makes so much sense! It does. It works. You're, you're You're a frightening human being for recognizing that. I like depth. For some reason... Man, it's driving me up the wall. Year zero, or zero year, whatever the fuck these assholes are calling it, is still going on in Batman 27. Um, cops are after Bats, but Gordon rescues him, rescues him, noting that the grift keeps him straight. Which, wait, what? I, you know, I like the fact that Batman had an issue with Gordon because of the trench coat. And then Gordon, um, Reveals the origin of the trench coat and he had to fight dogs. And I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> uh, I thought there were some cool aspects of it. I hate the fact that for the last, I'm going to say, 40 years, since the mid 60s, right. so roughly 40 years, there's been a wink and a nod that Commissioner Gordon, the top bright super cop, knows exactly who the fuck Batman is. <laughs> 
Like, it's pretty goddamn clear. Like, you know. Well, he's, I mean, if he is the, you know, super bright, you know, top cop, then he ought to know. Right. But so now in the new 52, suddenly we're going back. Now, to be fair, this is year one. But even then, he's got, (laughs) he's got an inkling. The number of people who could be Batman is so small. Like, I mean, I I feel like evolution-wise, we've moved past the... It could be anybody. It could be anybody ridiculously rich, in fucking incredible shape, with a shit-ass ton of stuff, (laughs) and nothing but time. Like, how many people are on this fucking list? I feel like you could figure out Batman over a weekend doing Sudokus at the same time. Well, the, the the part about the grift keeping him straight kind of is like confused me. Basically, uh, the way I understood it is that he was in a situation where he took something without realizing it was straight grift, thinking it was a gift. Yeah. And then when he realized it was um, a scam, he went to give it back and found out that the kindly shopkeeper was uh, in the middle of his coat store was running a dog fighting ring, which, by the way, is insane. <laughs> like. Come on. And then, of course, the cop, other cops, wanting to make sure that he kept the grift, threw him into a dog fight, which he managed to kill three dogs. Which means Commissioner Gordon might be able to kick Batman's ass, for fuck's sake. <laughs> you throw him, uh, the average guy in with three pit dogs. I and I have to assume here, because my knowledge of pit dogs is fairly minimal. Um, it's probably not going well. No, probably There's not. a dog on my nuts. I'm going to lie down now and hope this stops soon. <laughs> They have they have gone all out to prove that James Gordon is just badass of all normal badass people. Which is just, I'm fine with that, but I'm going to take my glasses off so I don't know who you are, Batman. Bruce Wayne. Uh, like, yeah, just, that was kind of rough. I was I, like, really, fellas? It just it hit my suspension of disbelief. Like, even early on, um, if you're going to take Batman seriously, you have to take Commissioner Gordon seriously. Like, you have to take right. all the characters... And, like, I'm an incredibly smart cop who uh, realizes that sometimes you have to work outside the law. But I don't want to know who you are, vigilante fuckwad. No. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. That's a terrible plan. Not one thing about that character would say, I don't need, in case you do go rogue, I don't need to know who you are. <laughs> Insanity. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so I, I got the jacket thing. I thought the dog fighting was really strange. It's like, you know, oh, I'm... Uh, why do my why does my Burberry smell of fucking dog hair? <laughs> Misa no understands, uh, you know. <laughs> don't do that anymore. What, Jar Jar douchebag, the jacket owner? Come on. I mean, I don't get that. I just don't Don't ever bring in Jar Jar when I'm talking Batman. Bat Jar? Stop. Jarman. Dude. Oh, you bring out the dude. <laughs> That's the same tone I use with my twelve year old nephew, man. Don't make me pull it out for you. Stop. (laughs) The tone. Thank you, asshole. I feel you should pause now while I go throw up. So Batman You are a bad person. So Batman 28. Bad, bad person. Oh, you really do want to be. Yeah, I'm totally hanging on. All right. uh, Batman 28 is this one. Okay. You see the cover for that? Oh, God. Yes. Ah, yes. Where <clears throat> my summary, and you can get deeper because I have no interest. Some stupid setup for some stupid story I didn't really want. <laughs> Bluebird spoilers, some variation on normal shit. They can't just leave things alone and give me a decent story. They were like, but what about if Bluebird blah, 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 blah. What if uh, Catbird was blah, blah, blah. What, what, if, what if? Just tell me a fucking story. Don't yep. swap shit out every other fucking issue. Yeah, now, once again, we have a different timeline or a future timeline where Batman's sidekick, Bluebird. Why do they all have to be birds? Yeah. I mean, there was a spoiler, which they, and spoiler makes her triumphant reappearance. Congratulations, Dante. You've got a chick in a fucking dungeon again. <laughs> Yay. That says a lot about you, dude. <laughs> um, that's not fair. He, I'm sure he likes spoiler when she wasn't in a dungeon also. Yes. But still. Uh <laughs> Spoiler shows up. Catwoman mob boss annoys the living bejesus. Yeah. Is she still have her own book? Because uh, that ain't going to work. Yeah, she does. 
That's like, uh, I'm rereading Spider Island, and I'm like, how was Captain America in his own book when he was a giant fucking man spider thing in the middle of this storyline? It doesn't matter. We don't need continuity. I like continuity, though. It makes no, sense. No, you don't. You've argued against it tons of times. Yeah, but I like it. It just doesn't mean I can't argue against it. I can argue against anything. <laughs> I'll remember that. I'll, re- I'll forget it, so I'll still win. <laughs> but yeah! yeah! The trick is to believe it in the moment. Oh, I see. And if you don't really care about anything, you can believe anything in the moment. It's amazing. Wow. You're becoming a more horrible person by the moment. Every and, single word coming yet, out of your mouth is making you worse. And yet lovable. Not really. Not anymore. No, that's true. I'm haggard now. Haggard. <laughs> haggard, <laughs> not haggard. Yes, I'm fat and I have a beard, but not like that. I didn't say Hagrid. Oh, okay. You said Hagrid. There's something in the back of your mind, motherfucker. Nothing in the back of my mind about Harry Potter. (laughs) (laughs) I say thee nay, sir. about Hagrid. Oh. Oh. You're just trying to cover some ground from the previous. Like, what can can I throw at him? Give me something, something. Oh, you use this word. Gotcha. (laughs) You stink of desperation, sir. And speaking of stink, and look at that segue. Uh... What stunk for me was Green Lantern 27, and Floto Span is not going to like this. He's one of our Twitter followers. Oh, okay. He is the Green Lantern guy. I actually thought this was a step up. Yeah, from the but I previous. had already made my decision at this point, so it was like, whatever. So, they're reconstructing HQ on Mogo, which seems to be semi-brilliant, because Mogo never really went out and policed the galaxy anyway. So, St. Walker loses hope. <gasps> the irony of it. The last Blue Lantern <laughs> has no hope. <laughs> While the newest prisoners are actually infiltrators from the clans working on their Durlin impersonators. Somebody impersonates Hal and they make a galaxy-wide broadcast of the core is taking charge. I, I like... Here's... Okay. Um, so you're anti this, that's pretty clear. Uh, it, it wasn't so bad, but... Here's what I like. I like the Durlin taking over as Hal. Um, I like the fact that the um, Hairlock guys finally did something of semi-interest. Oh yeah, those guys, yes. Um, I liked that you had <laughs> a bunch of different lanterns with different viewpoints at the same time. Yeah, it's nice that they occasionally actually do that. That that I like. Oh God, I'm tr- um... because everybody towing the party line all at the same time gets a little old. What the hell is the name? Uh, oh, who's the? I cannot believe I can't remember this. I'm totally embarrassed right now. What the Green Lantern trainer? Um... Kilowog. Thank you. Good God! All I could think, all I could think was Nort, and I'm like, no, no. Ah, uh, do you ever get one thing locked in your head and it just oh, won't yeah. make room? Yep, oh, absolutely. that was so annoying. Totally. I like the Kilowog. It's like Hal. Like you're being very Hal right now. Like, <laughs> quit looking at the dots and remember, there's a bigger. But that was an awesome moment. It was so Kilowog. So those were really strong. The characterization was strong. Um, here's what I didn't like. First off, dear Green Lantern universe, Hal Jordan is an awesome superhero and the, quite possibly the world's shittiest leader. <laughs> Stop putting him in... Like, have you ever put him in charge and shit worked out? Like, every time he's at the top of the food chain, you guys get decimated <laughs> like an Italian army. Like, it's fucking <laughs> bad. <laughs> You people lose like three-year-olds on Jeopardy. Like, it does not go well for you. Just go back to being police. Leave these other fucking spectrums and these other weirdos alone. Like, seriously, every single time. Like, the Green Lanterns have the stupidest rules ever. It's, oh, uh, we're not following our leaders anymore. Let's vote our most lantern-y lantern. (laughs) Our most lantern-y lantern. Like... Has Hal Jordan is a terrible lead. like there's a reason in the Justice League they're like, Oh Hal, go do this. I think no, no. go do this. <laughs> he does not get a say in group operations He either. gets teamed with Flash. You know why? Because Flash thinks. <laughs> it's like you two, oh, figure this out. Every time Hal's on his own, it's like, My will gets me through this. That's great. You beat up Captain Cold. <laughs> Woohoo. I'm telling you, man, it's not <laughs> Hal Jordan it's has no more will than, like, really, we vote leadership on will? 
like that. Just think about what you're saying there. It's like yeah, I, I want it more, therefore I'll be a good leader. Is the worst fucking theory ever. That's a horrible, horrible theory. That's what I'm saying. That doesn't work at all. And that's what they keep <clears throat> doing. No ability to influence people without being a giant jackass. No actual. Well, I mean, I'm sure he's got tactical skill, but. And very no, he's definitely got tactical skill. He's a likable dude. He banged half the female ones, including the ones that look like Chris Starr, the fucking warrior. <laughs> um, but nonetheless, let's be very clear about this. He does not make good decisions. If you are a Lantern fan, I'm talking to Dante. What was the, um, the Twitter Flodo. follow? Floto Span. Are you fucking with me? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Dear Floto Span, I'd like you to take a moment and reflect on this. Every time that the Lanterns put Hal Jordan in charge, has he ever not listened to what they had to say and done the complete fucking opposite? <laughs> Every time. Is there ever been a point where he's like, that's a good point there, Kyle. We should do that. Why, thank you, Guy. Yes, I do think we should have more borders. <laughs> um, yes, Kilowog, a more trained court. It's like, no, we need to do this first. Hey, uh, Hal, we just let all these prisoners go free. Yeah, but... We need to do this instead. Every you can make all these logical, debatable points. You got thirty-five advisors. He sits there. It's like I want pudding. He does, man. That's him. On top of this, as if this is not bad enough, you've got. I'm supposed to believe that in a fucking planet filled with green fucking lanterns, including the actual mother fucking planet. <laughs> Yeah. Not just everybody on it, yes. but the fucking mud yeah. has an opinion about everything. But somehow there's a cook who's an evil supervillain, Durlan, shape-changing motherfucker that nobody picks up on. It seems a bit of a stretch. Really, uh, ring, scan for douchebags. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. <laughs> cook. Not to mention the guys who just happen to show up and walk in. Like, oh, they're captured? Well, the rest of us will sneak up. On Green Lanterns? That was another stretch, too. You snuck up on the Green Lantern. Really? How does, how does Mogo not know that crime itself is walking on his face? Hmm. <laughs> My planetary senses tell me that I feel dick feet. I should probably <laughs> capture those guys. <laughs> like, come on! What does Mogo do, man? Uh, basically, he crashes into other things, and in Alan Moore stories, he scares off bounty hunters. That's about it. Yeah. But yeah, so I re I thought this was a huge step forward in terms of like characterization, like clever little things. Like I hate Hal Jordan in charge, but I thought for the first time Vendetti had a good feel for everything, and he followed up with a huge motherfucking war. I'm like everyone hates Green Lantern. I'm like really, I like you for. 14 15ths of an issue <laughs> and you follow up with yet another giant fucking lantern event nope 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 and that is why it's no longer on the form it's like go fucking beat up starro i say this every time we talk about green lantern find starro kick his ass for two issues a nice green lantern starro fight bring the fucking chipmunk one with you i don't bring the crystal egg thing from fucking spartovskis i don't fucking care <laughs> You know, wow. the goldfish bird one. I have a partner. I don't care. Where's the reason? Do something. <laughs> Just don't get in another giant space war where you look like a dickhead. I'm tired. I want to go to bed. I don't want to think about Hal Jordan being an ass hat every evening. <laughs> wow. The streetlights have come on. You need to come home. <laughs> <laughs> bring, bring her back in. This is why... I'm, Billy don't fish. <laughs> Woof! And I think that's all we have to say about Green Lantern. <laughs> oh, I give you the wrong Superman Unchained. Because what I got written down is seven. Which and one what's is in it? front of me is five. So that's not going to work. Well, basically, you've got... Um, well, what actually happened in this one? Maybe, it'll, maybe I wrote it wrong. The machine... Yeah. Uh, reveals to Lois that her father is a traitor, which she does not buy, while wearing her father's face. Uh, Wraith and Superman continue to debate being an alien, and Wraith taunts Superman with the fact that he won't stay as he is for much longer because the secret identity will have to watch everyone die, and that'll suck. Uh, meanwhile, you also have Superman and Lana 
revealing Superman's powers through falling off a silo yes. right after he discovered breasts for the first time <laughs> on his teacher, which I thought was an unnecessary point about Superman I did not need. And then yeah. the guy who owns the barn doesn't like strangers, discovers Superman can fly, so proceeds to show up and shoot him a bunch of times in front of his mom. I like Snyder, but man, that guy's got a dark mind. He does sometimes, man. Still, uh, my favorite Superman of all the current books, by far. So, you know, two points there. Well, you'll have to give me some dough, because that was the last one. I'm fine with that, because I hate Wraith. You know. I'm an atom bomb. I'm another super alien from a planet I'll never see again, but I listened to the U.S. government. Yeah, that was kind of like, where did you, why are you here again with this now? Yes, I'm an alien, but Sam Lane makes a lot of sense. <laughs> are you Nort? Are you Nort in some sort of bodysuit? A lot of Nort references today. Yeah, it's kind of good. I like Nort. <laughs> I don't have a problem with Nort. The Wraith Nort talk? connection. Ooh, no, there's none of those. Um, I had totally forgotten that this was merely a one shot. I read through it and I'm like, that's where they're going to leave us? And I look back at the cover again and it's like, yes, that's where they're going to leave us. So, Lois Lane, get her own book, is obviously what in the television industry they call a backdoor pilot. They're just a little test. Oh, They're okay. not really going to publish anything else until they see the reaction. They're going to make it stand alone so it's just fine. And then if it works out, then it becomes the actual pilot. I like the fact that, that Lois Lane is an evolved character. I hate every day that Superman is with Wonder Woman, not Lois. Like, Superman, Lois Lane, like, Spider-Man, Mary Jane. Those are the two relationships that stay. That's how it is. That's how it's supposed to be. And they fuck Spider-Man constantly with that. And it drives me insane. Uh, but so be it. Like, that's no, his lot in life. I'm Spider-Man. They're I... really stuck, though. Because you, it's very difficult to get away with long-standing relationships and say, well, why wouldn't they get married? And then everybody hates married superheroes, so it's not possible to have them. So there's a very weird... An irritating line that you have to walk very carefully. Random Punisher just showed up in Techno War? Really? Yeah. Norman Reedus is the Punisher. I told, well, see, all I saw was Reedus. I didn't see who he played. <clears throat> That's kind of crazy. So, yeah, you can't have marriages. Nobody wants marriages in you. Everybody's upset that there might be marriages somehow. I, I feel, well, I, they feel like it alienates kids. I think four dollars a comic alienates yeah, kids. Yeah, I think that's a far bigger barrier to entrance of kids in the comics. Than the fact of the matter is, is that <clears throat> I don't have a problem with the relationship. Like they don't have to get married. First off, not everybody wants to get married. Yeah, that's true. Uh, I am married, so obviously that doesn't always go your way, regardless of feelings. <laughs> Love you, Commodore. <laughs> yeah. But uh, anyway. <laughs> um, and digging a hole till the rain. Co- yeah, we're done. <laughs> done. Uh, I really think that fucking Spider-Man is just a, it's a rite of passage to write other comic books it's like oh uh, I have this idea for Green Arrow really um, go over to Marvel fuck Spider-Man and then come and back come back <laughs> and we'll see how you work did out. you screw Spider-Man nicely then you can write comic books <laughs> it's true dude but uh Superman and Lois Lane. I see Lane. a bunch of grizzled old bullpen assholes floating around a bar going, I made my bones fucking Spider Man. <laughs> I created Puma to fuck Spider Man. <laughs> oh, you did fuck Spider Man. <laughs> I got this spot. <laughs> All I got is a bag of rocks. So I dropped him on his head and fucked him. <laughs> it's very fun. Yeah. But, that, uh, no, that's the thing you got to do if you're going to write Spider-Man. You have to find a way that no one else has fucked him. <clears throat> I'm sorry, uh, Mr. DeManis, uh, this is an excellent script, and I love the way you write, uh, but Spider-Man appears to be smiling on page 7. Can <laughs> we actually have him step in some dog shit or something? Because we don't do that here. Pigeon flying by yeah. something. We can't oh. have that. No, no, I'm building the part where his leg falls off. Oh, that's fine. Then. <laughs> Temporary happiness is fine. If it's fleeting, you can have a cookie. That's fine. But he can't have a pie. It's so fucking true, dude. That's boiled down perfectly. 
<laughs> you can have the cookie, but no pie for you. But yeah, but, but we so brought fine. that up because Lois, Lois Lane... and Superman belong together. But I like the fact that they have this developed Lois Lane character because Lois is one, regardless of powers, Lois Lane is one of the strongest female characters in comics, Barna. Oh yeah, you have a woman absolutely who that is the has truth a career. Right there. Makes decisions, ignores fucking every male lo- uh, role model leader in her life, up to and including superheroes. Fucking Batman is like, fuck, I don't want to fuck with Lois Lane again. <laughs> it's like, I'm, do you remember uh, when McGinnis drew it and he was breaking into the White House and fucking, it's Batman. You, you just see Batman like, how did I get to this? <laughs> like, at what point was uh, being Lois Lane break into the White House one of my plans? <laughs> Like, I wouldn't let Robin Shoot. come. How the fuck did you make it here? Is crypto holding my fucking ace bathound hostage? Like, why is this happening? Because Lois Lane will not be denied, and that is awesome. You know, all you people like Captain Marvel, all you, like, go back, read, maybe not Lois Lane Adventures from the 60s, because that's some depressing shit. <laughs> Space Witch! No. But uh, in general... I'll trick Superman into marrying me again. <laughs> No, that was not the Lois Lane we're fucking talking about here. No, but since we're the talking 70s... talking like post-74. Yeah, yep, no. <laughs> Lois Lane is an awesome, awesome female comic book character. And they really nailed that part well. And they bring, you know, the sister back in, but... But what was she doing in this issue? Where this, did, what were, are those drugs all about? What did she need Some sort of for? drugs that turn, turns people into idea. alien mutant... And then it, yeah, it tar- turns into yeah. the bloodlines, for fuck's sake. It really did have a bloodlines feel. And it then did. There's this weird government group that's capturing them, but it doesn't want to kill them. It just wants to help them. And they don't want Lois to report about it, but they respect her. Like, I'm like, I, yeah. Whoa, <laughs> it's dude. Like, you guys cannot have it all these same different ways. <laughs> and I like what Lupacino did, but Bennett... I'm not sure what he was reaching for in this. This has got to be something like, let's gauge the reaction. I would. Uh, I don't think there's the current market uh, with the way everything is. Lois, like Lois Lane, action reporter, just does <clears throat> not work as a book. Uh, so I don't know if the one shot was just to regather interest in Superman by reinvolving, or maybe I don't know. Like I don't know where you're going with this book. Lois is a strong character, and Superman, other than Unchained, which I like, has not. I did not enjoy any of those <laughs> books, so maybe people aren't getting that. But nothing about this book is like, damn, that's a crusading reporter. I should buy more Superman. No, that's not fucking happening. <laughs> Absolutely not. That's like buying a Bibbo one shot and just something. A Bibbo one shot. Fuck no. <laughs> Bibbo one shot. <laughs> I would never buy a Bibbo one shot. The Bibtacular Bibbo Even man? If he is his favorite. <laughs> Not favorite. Favorite. Well, yeah, I don't understand. Like, the the second one shot that you bought. Joker's Daughter, because it was the non kooky cover. And right. I wanted to know why everyone in the fucking universe was making such a big deal out of this Is this the same thing. one, or is this a different book? It is the non. Crazy okay, so it's the same book. It's just yes. a sl- it's not like the shiny cover, right? How many shiny covers did we buy all in all? Six, I want to say. I got two, but I gave you one because I wouldn't have it in my house. <laughs> yeah, and then I think I gave up one back to you. No, no, no. Uh, you try uh, the ventriloquist was the one. Oh, that I yeah, made you- I took it to ease your pain. Yeah, yeah <laughs> not having that in my home. Uh, and then I got the Suicide Squad one, and then yeah. you got a couple of Batman's. Right. Okay. So this is that then. Okay. Yeah. Was this reprinted or you just found this later? The, well, they didn't make a non crazy cover version at that point. Oh, so this is a reprint. Then. So if you if you were going to get Joker's Daughter, you were going to get it hologram foil chromium shit. So anybody who liked Joker's Daughter quite possibly bought this motherfucker and like, "Oh wait, this is a different goddamn cover." Yeah. Well, that's annoying as balls. A little bit. Okay. <laughs> um it was slightly repetitive. It but is. I actually did enjoy it more than I ever thought I would. It's the story of this crazed teeny bopper's breakdown inspired by the Joker. She wanted to be your father. She senses something about the Joker, and it connects with her in a way that slowly drives her insane. Yes. And it is a slow build. It's not your average comic book. Oh, like. Um, 
as much as I love the killing joke, but I'm going to use that as an example. Like, uh, just the Joker standing there going, ha, 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 holding his head in his hands. Like, because for most people, that's it. Like, that's the crazy moment. Yes. It's like I was saying, then I go, ha, 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 and <laughs> now I wear weevil costumes and call myself the bull weevil. <laughs> what? I don't know what you just said. <laughs> but I thought it was an interesting build how she slowly went from off to crazy to homicidal to supervillain. Yes. And then the weird moment at the end where the Joker may have given her approval. It was very well done. And the fact that as much as I don't give two shits about the Joker's daughter or Harlequin back in 60s Teen Titans. Right. Days, yeah, 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 yeah. So there is an actual historical fucking reference for this. I thought this was well done. And the, when she guts the fucked up... Um, Arkham Asylum intern there. Ah, yeah. And they're like, and she manages to cut the one guy who survived the Joker, and he's like, "This is depressing, and I don't want to do this anymore." Like, I'll help you, Miss, even though I'm scared. And she cuts him in half. And you're like, dude, you're just the unluckiest fucking intern ever. <laughs> All right. I mean, shit. People are banging Gray over on Gray's Anatomy every eight minutes, but <laughs> you, my friend, I've never seen one of those. I, she may never have had sex for all I know, but you know, I assume that's a better place to be an intern than fucking Arkham Asylum. <laughs> Arkham Asylum is the worst place. To be. <laughs> Arkham Asylum is where they're like, you're the dickhead. You get the. This is the guy that, you know, takes off Mondays from frat parties, you know. This is the guy that was like, I think there's good money in medicine, man. Uh, man. He doesn't care about helping well, yeah, people. I, they're like, unlike, say, uh, let's go, okay, going back to the ventriloquist one, which I loathe. Yeah. This is an introduction, introduction of a character. Introduction. An introduction of a character where you're like, okay, I kind of want to see what they do with her next. Yeah, a little bit. But the problem is that came out months ago and they haven't done anything with her yet. Yeah. No one. No Unless idea she's been like showing up in Batwing or something. Uh, no, not that I've heard. Stop throwing multiple arrows in one shot. But, I mean, you keep the um, ventriloquist one because it's a shiny cover and. So be it. This one you hold on to because you liked it. Yeah. And it's at least loosely related to... And considering the number of Batman-related things you've been divvying off... Chucking to the wayside. It's like, I love Batman, but you, (laughs) Gotham Knights, can go. Yes. It's too much, man. Too much. And so be it. But this was a solid read. Yes. Uh, I didn't love it, but I was at least intrigued, and I thought in one issue they had a really strong character arc. Yep. For once. And she's legitimately creepy with the face worn on her face. <laughs> You're going to get a disease from that. I, I've i never had somebody else's flesh slowly <laughs> fucking dissolve on mine, but shit is not going to do no, well. No, it's going to start. She's going to get gangrene or some you, shit out you, of that. That's, that's just not going to happen. Monty Python virus, some fucking thing okay. nobody's ever had. I'm so totally done. And having gotten done with that issue, we're done too. Really? That's it. No more books. See? It's all over. Free from DC for another month! Woohoo! So, and we do like to leave you with an air of, huh, when we're done with the show. So, do we? Sometimes. Oh. At any rate, I got nothing to add. I would like to kick back for a little bit. Maybe watch some Brave and the Bold. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's what you want, baby. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so say goodnight, Gracie. Oh, don't forget. Uh, what? what uh, this after this, will... this episode? Next, uh, what's next for you? What do you mean? I don't know what you're talking about. Where are you heading this weekend? Oh yeah, I'm going to Emerald City, but everybody knows that. Yeah, but it's literally next. So next episode will probably be the Emerald City recap. There will be episodes in between. How? How the interviews? Oh, yeah. Well, well, yeah, but those will be next, so. Yeah, well, well, whatever. Whatever. Don't give me that shit. So there. Okay. I I held off so you could give that, and you found time to get a belch in. All right. I wanted this episode over. Bless you, fuckers! And away. The Mean Geek is recorded live at the Reverend Mad Duck's apartment whenever the hell we can get to it. Find us on Facebook, Stitcher, Twitter under at the Meaner Geek. Subscribe to us through RSS. 
or we can be located at our own site, www.themeangeek.com. And most importantly of all, you can find us as a proud member of the Comics Podcast Network. Email us directly at themeanergeek at gmail.com. Can I drink now? You may. <laughs>